Hello everyone. My goal with this video is to do a basic explanation of voice over IP, so I'm not going to get real technical, but then I want to talk about all the benefits that come with voice over IP and why you need to start thinking about it um, for the future. Okay? So voice over IP, or VoIP as it's referred to in short, which stands for voice over IP, IP being Internet Protocol, all it really is in simple terms is taking the sound that you make and the sound that you hear and encoding it into uh, data packets that can write over the network. Just the same way you send an email, just the same way you send an MP3 file, it's just it's just sound that's encoded in a way that the computers can move it around and they can move it around over the internet. So when I talk into a voice over IP line, everything I'm saying, instead of turned into vibrations and electricity over a copper line, it's being turned into bits of information which can be then sent over the network to a receiving end, which then opens the packet and turns it again into sound. Okay? Not going to get real technical about voice over IP. Just know that it's sound that's being sent over the internet. So some examples of voice over IP that are in existence today are pretty common. Skype is a form of voice over IP. It also adds video, and that's part of what, what voice over IP has <clears throat> as part of its flexible features, as it includes video. Uh, Vonage is a type of voice over IP. Now, Skype and Vonage and, and some of these other kind of household name VoIP providers, they're proprietary. So that is to say that they're kind of like what we call walled gardens. In other words, to talk to another Skype person, you have to be a member of Skype to talk to... Well, Vonage, I guess you don't have to, but the, the real voice over IP trend today is a protocol called SIP. SIP, Session Initiation Protocol, and that is the most popular and open for, open uh, architecture of uh, voice over IP. But okay, enough about that. Let's talk about the benefits. It tends to be 30 to 50 percent less expensive than traditional telephone lines. Um, it's very flexible, flexible in the way that it can be used on many different devices. So it could be used on a telephone system, it could be used on a, on a house phone, it could be used on, uh, on an iPad, on a smartphone, it could be used on a computer. And I'll show you some examples of those in just a minute. Um, and also it's flexible with its location. Voice over IP is really cool in that you can move it around. So for instance, if I have a voice over IP line on my uh, computer, well, wherever my computer goes, that's where my phone rings, okay? Unlike a traditional line, a copper line from AT&T, typically terminates in one location and stays in that location. All right. Also, um, it's feature rich. Feature rich meaning that all those things that you would normally pay extra for, like caller ID, um, uh, call waiting, three-way calling, all that stuff is generally included in the flat price for a voice over IP line. And something I didn't touch on earlier, um, about that 30 to 50 percent, your typical AT&T line after taxes is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of about $55 a month. Um, generally, a voice over IP line is going to be anywhere from $20 to $30 a month with maybe another $3 to $5 of taxes. So you can see that it's you know quite a bit less expensive. Um, there are voice over IP lines out there that are pretty much close to free, but there's a little bit of you get what you pay for. I personally don't recommend any services to my clients unless they're in that twenty to thirty dollar range because those tend to be the the providers that have good customer service reliability um, the, the the redundancy that you need to, you know for for commercial operation uh, and then lastly is disaster resilient and because of this flexibility in its in its device and location it allows the line to be moved around very quickly so if the location where you're not your line normally rings say for instance your business phone system were to lose electricity those lines can be easily re-registered, it's called registering, but think of it as, as re-pointed uh, re to any device you want. So if you lose electricity in your main location, you could re-register those lines um, on a computer or even a soft phone, uh, laptop, uh, smartphone, whatever, um, at some other location where you do have power. Now let me give an example of some of the applications. Um, I've got several devices set up that use voice over IP. I want to just briefly show you each one and you can kind of start to begin to realize why this is so powerful. So let's grab the camera. Okay, first off is something called a voice over IP phone set. 
So this is a telephone set that's on a business phone system, which is actually 30 miles away from here. So this phone set is using voice over IP to communicate with that PBX that's located in another town 30 miles away. But yet, it operates just as though I were right in the same office where that phone system is. Now that's a proprietary Avaya voice over IP phone set. Just about every manufacturer today has got some version of a voice over IP set. All right. Now, there's also something known as an analog terminal adapter. Now what that does is it takes the network connection, see the RJ45 here, goes in, and that's the connection to the network. And then on the other side here is a little RJ11 connection, which is an analog phone port going to an analog phone. Plugs in the bottom of the analog phone. So what that allows me to do is have a voice over IP line um, operate on an analog phone. Now remember I said this is an RJ11 connection? This could just as easily be going into your phone system too. So for instance, if you have an older Northstar phone system, um, like, a, like an 0x32 or a 616, where the where the RJ11s plug in, you could use these little uh, analog terminal adapters to um, to get voice over IP accounts and use them on your uh, phone system that only accepts the analog ports. Now here's where it gets really cool. So here's my iPad. All right. So on my iPad, I can have a soft phone, meaning it's just a phone that's just software based. And so what happens is. Wherever this iPad goes, that's where the phone number goes. And I'm just using a little, just using a little Jabber headset plugged into it to, uh, to use it as my mic and earpiece. Really cool. And you can even use this on the 4G and 3G networks, although I don't necessarily recommend it. Um, it works best when it's usually connected by Wi-Fi. And then also there is the soft phone, which goes on a computer. So that's on my laptop. Alright, so that again, I'm just using a USB headset as a way of talking and hearing what's happening on the soft phone. Alright, so, and then, let's see, lastly, you can even have a, there's my cute little daughter, let's see here, um, you can even have a soft phone on a smartphone device. Okay, so that is a way of actually having two phones on one telephone device. This actually has a separate phone number. And I can make and, and take calls um, on a separate phone number on my smartphone device in addition to the regular cellular number that I have. Okay, so let's put you back up here so we can finish this up. So recapping, quite a bit cheaper, very flexible, and I think the last thing I was going to hit on was a disaster resilient. Because of all those things I just showed you, the, the portability and the, and the multiple devices you could run it on, it makes itself very disaster resilient. Think about the traditional environment where you've got telephone lines that are going into um, a location and they terminate on a phone system. All right. Now, if that phone system becomes inoperable or loses power, the only way that you can get that phone number to ring somewhere else is if you've already made some arrangement with the telephone company that you know to repoint that phone number in the event that the power goes out or you have to call the phone company and ask them to point that phone number to another location generally another phone number with voice over IP when the power goes out the lines become deregistered and they're waiting to be re-registered somewhere else and you can re-register them register them anywhere in the world on any device see the power there Okay, so that was a brief explanation about voice over IP and the benefits. Why you need to be thinking about it is because the telephone companies like Verizon and AT&T have not made it a secret about letting people know that they're trying to get out of the wireline business. So I suspect that in the next five to eight years, the copper lines are going to go away. And that the only thing left is going to be probably a choice between either a T1 or maybe cellular, but probably either a T1 or voice over IP lines. And then I guess maybe cellular connections for some people where it makes sense. All right, so let's start thinking about voice over IP. Um, if you have questions about voice over IP service, contact me through here. Um, my consulting practice handles that stuff. So if you want some guidance on uh, getting voice over IP service, I can certainly help you with that. Thanks for watching.